set that to record. All right, we are doing the beautiful blasphemy open mic. Um, we, uh, I didn't record the first thing we did, uh, which because it was someone else's poetry and I couldn't actually like ask their permission, so I'm not going to. I wasn't going to show it, but um, anyway, I think we're starting off with Cat. Sure, I have two pieces. I have two new ones that have been dying to be read. First one is called My Prayer at the BLM March. I wrote this on 531. So before everything blew up like it did. Just to put it in context, that's why I date my stuff. Date your stuff. That's my PSA. <laughs> date your material. I also put how old I am, but that's from that's just for me. Okay. Prayer is harmony with the universe. It is tuning into the earth. And she is green like Terra, like Gaia, like Aster. She is green like growth and grass and the eyes of the sea. If anyone could get quiet enough to hear the divine tuning fork, we'd sing like angels from the face of the earth. We join the heavenly chorus, weep with the waterfalls, clean up the messes, join forces, and show our true faces to each other. And I don't know if I want to read this one, but I have another one called Army of Karens. Mm. And it's about trying to use the force of the Karen for good. Because <laughs> usually the Karens are so upset about stupid stuff. They're like, these shoes are the, they, the, the employee gave them to me and they're the wrong size. And I need to speak mm -hmm. to the manager about stupid stuff. Like, oh, let it go. So, so that's what it's about. I don't know if I want to read it. Why not? That's okay. I'm like, I don't know if I want to read it. I wrote it when I was really mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Alrighty. I can read. I can read the first two. Uh, two stanzas. The first two thirds of it. I'm okay, okay with that. All army right. of Karens, rise up, you army of Karens! I'll give you something to complain about. Please speak to the manager of the police force. Demand justice. Demand to keep only the healthy apples. Please speak to the manager of the city. Demand peace and fairness for the least of these. Hmm. And that's it for now. I'll work on the end to make it uh, make it more, more refined <laughs> or whatever. All right. And maybe I'll share that next time. I'll work on it. All but right. I like the idea. We need, we need the Karens, you know, convert mm -hmm. them. Have a broad coalition, man. Right. Uh, Morgan, did you have anything you wanted to read? Um, no, I don't have anything to contribute. I just kind of want to listen today. I didn't know that this was like a thing, and I wanted to check it out and see what y'all were up to, like just being nosy, uh, curious. <laughs> That's, cool. Over here. That's cool. I always welcome new people. Actually, it's weird because it's like every week it's a different – it's like it's a small group, but it's a different group of people that meet up usually, so that's – it's every two weeks, so. Hell yeah. Dope, dope. All righty. I think I'm going to jump in with something, but I'm trying to remember, trying to figure out what. You I haven't got anything from, from She Divines. Uh, this is a collection I called, uh, called She Divines My Fortune Through Playing Cards. Um, it's a really weird, a really short, weird collection uh, I put together. Um that is sort of like autobiographical poems, which I usually don't do. Um, it's my own story told to me through this idea of like a, through playing cards. So every, every poem is a different title of a, of a playing card and it's about a different time in my life. So um, hmm. I think I will read. The Joker, which is like, eh. All right, so. There must be some way out of here. You ponder this with your head bowed and eyes closed, handed, you know, hands folded in the shape of a prayer. 
as the preacher woman drones on about damnation, you will be reminded of, star, uh, of stargazing as a kid and hoping that one day you'd grow up to be a space cowboy. When you imagined yourself as an adult, you were riding on a rocket ship like a noble steed, galloping across the night sky, wrangling the stars into, the, into your own constellations. You knew even then that this was the genre of fantasy, that some things are impossible, like bringing the stars together or predicting the future. You know that the stars are billions of light years away from us and each other. You know that the future isn't fixed or within your reach, but uh, you still also know that it feels good to make believe. But in that house, you won't feel like this. It won't feel good. You'll be sick with worry that someone will see right through you and see the atheist hiding under the skin of a believer, find the wolf in sheep's clothing and choose uh, and chase it out with torches and pitchforks. You'll wonder what about being a wolf makes you inherently bad? And that if there is a God and they made your brain wrong somehow, why? And if change is even possible, how? No matter how many things you, how many times you beg for salvation, you will feel nothing. No revelation, no love for some indescribable higher power, no life-changing affirmation time and time again. Just you alone in your head like you, well, just you like always before and always after. You will think sometimes that, that if there is a god, he or she might be akin to a lunatic Batman villain laughing at this world and all its relentless confusion and heartbreak, giving itself no relief, taking itself so serious. There must be some way out of here. An illuminating exit sign will offer it frequently. But you will be too kind to leave these sheep alone under the watchful eye of a crooked shepherd without a wolf around to protect them. Um, this is uh, this one's called Jack of Hearts, and um, it's like a typical like teenager first crush poem, or at least looking back at like like that thing. Anyway, oh Jack. Your soul is so old, but your heart is not done curing yet. What a mess. You've got blood on your sleeves, Jack. Put it back in your chest. Keep it safe, Jack. Keep it warm. It's still got years before it's ready to beat for someone like this. It's trying too hard. It's cute, but it's not. Tonight is not the night, Jack. This is not the place or time, and she is not the girl. I promise you, Jack. I promise you. You'll know when it's right. You'll know when it's true, Jack. You will know the cards. They've told me so. Hmm. Would you like me to read something? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, something I started today. I don't think it's quite complete, but I'm going to read it anyhow. Night falls over the rim of the world, deuce velvet cloak spreading, becoming cavern baldequin of stars and silent indigo sea of the moon. Fantasy transforms to reality, and the unknown waxes known, as the infinite all intertwines on pathways of desire. Enter the shadows of life, playing, frolicking, dancing, sky-clad and vulnerable in exegesis of limning light. Silent, eternal voices singing, soaring pans in Arios chorus. Perfection, imperfection, engulfed, swept aside by total immersion in ultimate joy of being. Um, let's see, I can read another one. Okay. I've written, I've written six poems in the last week. <laughs> nice. 
in moments between between life and death and life again healing and waking from within oceans of re uh, that getting my tang tangled from within oceans of infinity in synchronous syzygy of past present and future touching silken shadows of past letting go to compassing winds of time dancing in convergence of unknown forever we learn learning what life is as past fades across rim of today into unremembered future learning life is love and love is life no hallelujahs no hosannas an awakening mm. so who's next <laughs> Pat, you got more? We could just do that like rotation and go cat me, you, cat me, you, cat me, you. Until someone else shows up. <laughs> hey. So just to give you context, this was from November 21st last year. Heartbreak. You learn about your heart as it breaks. What makes the heart ache? What makes the earth quake? What makes the breath quake? What makes the voice shake? What will it take to grow this time around? Is there a banner in need of a body? Is there a fight in need of these arms? Is there a cry to rally around? Is there a hurt to hug? Is there an other to include? Whatever way you respond to the despondence, resolve to keep the door to your heart revolving, always open for anyone to walk in and always open for the poisons inside to find their way out. Mm. And for next one. Here's the roots. This was from February 7th, this last February. Roots, give me the boots the monks wear. Let my toes boast holy blisters, ready to trek through the unknown and prepared to arrive at nowhere. Let me lace the boots of silence, strap up the spaces in between us, buckle up the meditation pillow and secure my incense to the heart of my traveling atlas. Let the breezes of spaciousness meander through my thoughts. Let the vistas and the caverns meet me along the way. Let me smell the rose and the dandelion and enjoy them the same. Give me the robes the monks wear that protect their personhood and their devotion along the paths through the wilderness that takes me to you. Mm. Okay. So um, this piece is like a bit of a travelogue piece I wrote back in 2015. Holy crap, that feels like so long ago. Um, uh, we were going to Kentucky for a friend's wedding and um, it jumps out to me tonight because of the long trip I just took to New York that I just got back from. So this kind of like is where my soul is at. <laughs> All right, so two hours till Kentucky. Two hours till Kentucky. The world is on fast forward around us. The side of my forehead is flat against the passenger side window. Trees crowd behind guardrails for miles, protesting highway pollution. Two hours till Kentucky. On the eighth round of this CD, around about the fifth listen, songs began to blend into one another, morphing into ambient noise that filled the empty moments between conversation and struggle against the waves of tempting sleep. Two hours till Kentucky. I pause on a song and explain the biographical significance of that particular lyric. You're too focused on the nerve wracking traffic to indulge me. Two hours till Kentucky. Uh, my seat reclined. I am watching the clouds creeping briskly across the sky through the panorama of the windshield, a silent movie. Two hours till Kentucky, an eternity of moments gone as soon as they happen, evaporating into the air. 
will be there in no time. And then, oh, here's a poem I haven't read in a while, and I don't think I've read on the uh, um, this particular thing before. So um, I will start by saying that no one in this poem is reflective of a person I actually know, and it's not written from my own pers personal perspective. It's just a story. I say that because some of the themes are kind of dicey, and uh, I don't want anyone to assume... Um, this is anything I've had personally dealt dealt with. It's just a thought it was an interesting um, perspective to take. All right, so mid-October by the lake. Afterward, I asked, where to? The beach, she replied. Too cold, I said. Fine, whatever, take me home, I guess. She's too much like you. Even now, 10 years later, she still swims in my old hoodie. The pink and blue butterflies on her fingernails barely escape the sleeps. We're sitting in the sand. She's looking at the water as if searching for something far out in the distance. Remember when we babysat all those years ago? She stole my hoodie and called it her cloak of invincibility. She meant invisibility. We were watching Harry Potter. Today, I wish it was the former. Are you going to tell my mom? She asked, no, but, but you should. I wanted to tell her about what happened in 92, about her mother's battle with depression and a similar thing, when a similar thing happened to her. I want your sister's story, I want, uh, but that's your sister's story to tell. So I did what you always told me to do and I let the quiet between us be. I'd watch the waves roll in and crash against the shore. I noticed the gray clouds heading toward us. It's going to rain, I said, let it. She replied with a calm acceptance. Yeah, she's way too much like you. She's grown up so much since the, the cancer took you from us. You wouldn't even recognize her. She looks nothing like her mother or her father for that matter. She looks, well, she looks like you, the spitting image. Why the beach, I asked after a long while of listening to the waves. This is where it happened. I felt an anger rise up through me. I was already clenching my fists before I realized there was no direction for that aggression to go. I took a deep belly breath and refocused. And why come back here? To see if it felt different? Does it? A little. More silence. I watched her writing things into the sand with a broken stick she found, and then pushing her palm across the words, wiping the letters into each other, cleaning the slate. Again, and again, writing in the sand. You know, she said finally, I was thinking for a while about keeping it. If I had, if it were a girl, I would have named her after her. I would have named it after her. She didn't have to say your name out loud for me to know. I miss her, she added. Me too. The waves kept hitting the shore and eventually the rain came. I drove her home. She offered to give me back my hoodie. I said, keep it, smiling. She shrugged and took it with her. On the way home, I drove past our old house. The new owners are letting the grass grow too long for my taste. It seems like everything has been growing in your absence, except me. Anyway, that's, I guess, yeah. I guess I'm up. Yep. Uh, do you folks mind a uh, hmm, somewhat mildly erotic piece? <laughs> Go for it, man. Okay. <laughs> Steamy images, visual echoes fill my mind. Those images, glimpses of your body, stir feelings. I pause, wanting, yearning, searching for source. Pleasure of scabbard, sword to sheath, 
with warmth, moisture, pulsing grip, massage with soaring intensity, freeing, unleashing, overflowing, rising tide. <laughs> and this one is a little more tame. It's titled Earth Song, U Euclid Creek. Burbling, rushing waters, cool sparkle of air, soft rustle of leaves on silken hillsides of green, and light dappled wind shadow neath slow dance of cloud and sky, hint of distant music and age-old calls of birds breathing from Gaia's heart. Refuge from the world midst sacred memories of horror-rhymed past and unknown future within translated feelings and moments. Thoughts well of the impossible becoming half-conscious dulcet dreams of the possible coalescing into phantasms. Memories of memories crossing pathways of longing woven of sensuous sunlight and velvet shadow on ethereal looms of time, stretching uncharted to the other side of the stars to vanish into the immense silence of infinity. Mm. Uh, we lost our one uh, young lady. Oh no. <laughs> That's I guess my first poem uh, offended her. Um, I don't know. More likely that her internet gave out. All righty. I think you're up, Kat. Just checking to see if anyone had messaged me for the Zoom link. Mm. I put it on my wall that this is happening. I'm like, message me for the link. So I'm just checking back. Yeah. Huh. Every now and again, that's what I'll end up doing too. Um, yeah, there was somebody who said he would try to pop in and um, a couple other people that were interested, but uh, and they said they'd be a little late if they did come at all. So. Okay, so I got I got one for you. This was written um, last what's it May last May. So May fifteenth, I wrote this one. Call and reply, but it fits like right now. It fits anyway. Mm -hmm. Call and reply. I'm tired, but tired isn't the right word. What do you call it when you're exhausted of being sad? when every cry for help is met with cold shoulders? What do you call it when soulless corporations call the shots and get to decide the costs of medicine, slick the pipeline to prison, profit more protected than people? What do you call it when the sadness lumps in the stomach, undigested, when the uterus weeps from strain, when heartless men decide whose heartbeats matter, when you're breathless because someone else lost their breath? I'm tired, but tired isn't the right word. What do you call it? When your tears run out and sleep too, when food is bland and poetry too, when artificial scares are not scary and the big fear lurks inside the elephant in every room. What do you call it when your voice no longer calls out? I'm tired, but tired isn't the right word. Mm. You want another one? Yeah. So sometimes I write a poem more than once. This is an example of how my, how my uh, process works sometimes. I have something I need to say, but I don't know how I want to say it yet. So this was my first version of saying the same thing. Tired of tired. 
I'm tired, but tired isn't the right word. Worried, anxious, despairing, filled with dread, hopelessness, exhausted of inner resources and hope. I'm tired of being tired, waiting for dawn to sh shatter, waiting for the last sighs of all the creatures, waiting for the numbness to engulf me so I won't have to wait anymore. Where can I help? What can I do? Who should I hug today? Who needs a gag gift in induced smile? Where did my magic go? That gives you an idea. Mm. And I, I didn't feel like that quite said it, so I wrote it again. I've done that more than once, where it's like, I have something I want to say, but I can't figure out how to form it. And then sometimes I'll take the versions I've come up with and like compile them a little bit. Like, oh, I liked that part of that. And I like that part of that. And I kind of mm -hmm. put them together. Yeah. Right. I've done that and before. Greater. I have one called Jester that I did that with. Yeah. So this one is omnipresent. It's for my cat loving friends out there. The cats insist on the door at least half open where they can come and go. Claustrophobic critters, no matter the room size, they need the safety exits open. They need an escape plan, a way out, a prenup. The cats will fixate on door resting on hinges with locks and sockets, pushing paws under, gripping and pulling, crying and clawing, praying desperately to their kitty goddess in the sky with her perky ears, raised whiskers, brushed tail. The cats will only rest in between the door and the threshold, between worlds, between this reality and the next. <laughs> I've had cats most of my life and yeah. <laughs> yeah I want to get a cat door for the rest for the restroom because they drive me crazy. And the way it works is that the, the place that you stand to use the sink is the same area where the door swivels open. So you can't mm -hmm. use the sink and have the door open. Do you see what, it, what I'm saying? Yeah, wonderful. So I, I have the door like cracked and then they try to come in and out while I'm standing right there. I'm like, guys, choose. <laughs> yeah. I need a cat door. There you go. My cat is strictly indoor, so <laughs> all the doors. Well, this, is, this is an inside door that I'm talking about. Oh, my. <laughs> the, the door to the restroom, yeah? Like, yeah. My, I, my cats are strictly indoors also. Mm -hmm. I forgot uh, some more invites, so maybe we'll get a couple more people. Mm -hmm. um, my cat, uh, I, I never, we, we never uh, fully closed the, even the bathroom doors. So, because the cat otherwise will just scratch and meow and moan at the door. So, she wants to come in and, and play uh, Peeping Thomasina, fine. <laughs> no big deal. I just don't want to leave to let the heat out. So, it's like in or out, get guys like I'm closing the door. You can be <laughs> in or out, I don't care. But going back and forth a thousand times isn't working for me. Yeah. <laughs> Oh well. <laughs> Alrighty. So I'm gonna pick something else from the book. I haven't read anything from Okay. So um... Yeah, I'll do the Queen of Clubs. <laughs> Time and time again, Jack, you will meet the wild queen of clubs, the gatekeeper and her merry band of hooligans. You will want nothing more to be one of them, to sit beside the misfit queen under her makeshift crown on her throne of tragic mystery. 
You are not a white knight, Jack. You will not want to save her. You will want to be saved, but she will never be your savior. The day you are invited to join her club will be the day you stop defying or deifying the broken and realize that there is no queen of clubs, no gatekeeper, no Cassidy for you to Kerouac after just motherless milk carton children like you. Telling themselves they aren't lost, telling themselves they aren't missing anything important. You don't need an invitation, Jack. You will get it in your own way. Uh, you will get in your own way thinking like that. Just say hi. She will say hi back. That one was more about when I was uh, when I was a kid. I had this um, inferiority complex, I guess, where I thought everyone else had something figured out that I didn't, <laughs> and um, and like everyone was operating on some level I wasn't. And so I had the very, like, I was very intimidated about interacting with people that I thought were cool. Because I thought, like, they would see right through me <laughs> and see, like, how freaking lame I was. But, yeah, most of the people that I eventually became friends with that were like that, I just found out they were just broken, too. So. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, this is like the most autobiographical I've ever written, and it's just like five or six poems in a really small collection. But, um, all right, Ace of Diamonds. Blood may be thick, but without water it is dust. You will say this more often to your family than I love you. Look down, see those roots? The ones growing up from the ground into, into you, your mind, your soul, every cell of your body? You do see them, don't you? You'd rather not. You'd rather be a lone kite without a string. You want to take those sharp edges, the ones that seem to separate you from the rest of these weeds and hack away at those family ties. But if you succeed, you're not going to fly, Jack. Just die of dehydration and separation anxiety. Um, the Queen of Diamonds. Uh, your past does not belong to you. It is a mystery. It is a puzzle with pieces ma uh, meticulous, uh, maliciously lost. It is a who done it in which you all you know is who done it, and why, um, the why, the where, the when, the how, or what was, uh, oh, and not why, where, where, when, or how, or what was done. You will stare in the bathroom mirror for hours trying to put it all together, recognizing your father's bleeding heart beating in your chest, but not these sharp edges that you and only you seem to possess. You will go looking for answers in the sky and find nothing. You will go looking for answers in microfiche of old newspapers and find nothing. You will go looking for answers everywhere and only find conflicting tales littered with, the, uh, littered with swaying bias and fairy tales littered with wicked stepmothers. This is your ongoing quest to define yourself in the absence of an origin story never quite feeling whole, always telling yourself that you are, but don't fret, telling yourself that you are whole. But don't fret, Jack, for there is a moment in the distance when the myth of your mother will become flesh and bone to you, and she will sit ac you will sit across from the Queen of Diamonds and no longer question your sharp edges. Instead, you will both wonder this, where do we go from here? How do you mend a relationship that was made for, uh, that was made in four months and spent in nearly two decades drowning in stagnant water? How can you ever expect to be fully refurbished? Or will there always be water stains around these edge pieces? Mm. So, um, a little backstory without going into too much detail. My mom spent uh, 14 years in prison, and uh, I knew her for a full four months before that happened. And I did not meet her until I was 14. So that's what that piece is about. <laughs> wow, that's, I did not know that, Josh. That's amazing. 
Yeah, I mean, and it's weird because like her and I are cool now. Um, and she's been out for longer than she's been in. She was in. So it, it's weird because it's such a formative experience of my life, even though it happened before I was ever really a person, you know? And um, now that she's been out for so long and it's our relationship is entirely different, um, it's a it's a weird thing to um, to grapple with, like having such a formative part of your identity being the lack of this person being in your life, and then having them be right. this like active person in your adult life, and um, to reconcile that <laughs> a little bit, because like a lot of my younger identity was formed around the missing piece of that, you know. Right. So it's so who it's, raised you then? My dad. Okay, so you just had your dad. So it was like a single fam, single parent family. Mm, not exactly. Fun. It's it's a lot more complicated than that. Okay. Um, it's uh. Well, I mean, maybe yeah. he saw people or. You know, um. So it'd be more similar to the experience. Of life. Yeah, it's uh, it's he uh married someone else and i was raised until i was seven believing that um that woman was my mom and then it was oh dear yeah oh dear yeah then it was told to me around that time um i found out from a neighbor kid not to divulge all this dirty drama on the um but i found it from oh that's a lot Oh my God. Yeah, I found out from a neighbor kid and uh, they didn't tell me in a very graceful way. They, uh, they repeated one of the many rumors that uh, was only partially true. And, yeah. uh, and uh, so I spent a lot, of, uh, a lot of years thinking that my mom was, um, was a lot worse than she is um, and that her yeah. mom was a lot worse than it was. Um, it's just, it's just a, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting dynamic. And it's weird because my parents are married now. Like my parents, my two biological parents are married now and live yeah. together. <laughs> um, so it's just, it's just a strange, like how things shook out kind of situation. Yeah. But um, yeah, for the first, uh, I never, I didn't meet my mom until I was 14. That's a lot. Now I want to hear it again. Now that I know the backstory. Okay. I want to hear it again. Can we hear it again? Yeah, I can read it again. Hold on one, one second. I got to reply to somebody. Uh, we do it every two weeks. All right, Queen of Diamonds. Your past does not belong to you. It is a mystery. It is a puzzle with pieces maliciously lost. Okay, that's a that's a little like more thing. My ex stepmother um, threw away letters that my mom sent me, so that's what that line refers to. All right. Your past does not belong to you. It is a mystery. It is a puzzle with pieces maliciously lost. It is a who done it in which you know all you know is who done it. And not why, where, when, how or what was done. You will stare in the bathroom mirror for hours trying to put it all together, recognizing your father's bleeding heart beating in your chest, but not these sharp edges that you and only you seem to possess. You will go looking for answers in the sky and find nothing. You will go looking for answers in microfiche in old newspapers and find nothing. You will go looking for answers everywhere and only find conflicting tales littered with swaying bias and fairy tales littered with wicked stepmothers. This is your ongoing quest to define yourself in the absence of an origin story, to never quite feel whole, but always telling yourself that you are whole. But do not fret, Jack. For there is a moment in the distance when the myth of your mother becomes flesh and bone to you. You will sit across from the Queen of Diamonds and no longer question your sharp edges. Instead, you will both wonder this. Where do we go from here? 
How do you mend a relationship that was made in four months, but spent nearly two decades drowning in stagnant water? Can you ever expect it to be fully refurbished? Or will there always be water stains around its edge pieces? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a lot. That's it's hard sometimes to yeah. take these formative experiences that are so mm -hmm. fundamental to our identity and put them on paper. Yeah, it's oh, a trust really me, big challenge to do that. I wrote so many versions of poems about that subject. Mm -hmm. That is the only one I'm comfortable sharing publicly. Because all the other ones, I rereading them, I regret so much about my tone and so much about what I put into it. Like, um, I had to go through a lot of feelings to get to where I am with her right now. And, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I'm not I'm not okay with uh with all of those being out there. <laughs> um, I'm okay. Right, with no, but it's one. good that you wrote them though, because yeah. it's a it's a whole process. You have to go through the process, so that's mm -hmm. yeah, totally understandable that you wouldn't want to necessarily share all the nasty stuff that you <laughs> yeah. had to go through. Yeah, I exactly. Get that. But it's really good to get it out. I'm trying to figure out if there's any other piece in here that. Oh, the whole conceit of this is like, all right, so here's the prologue. Uh, I'll read prologue and then epilogue to get you an idea of like the what book ends this collection. Um, mm -hmm. So I set it in a time when I lived in um, Arizona for like, it was like a four year time span where I lived in Arizona as a kid. And um, there was this moment I had, a, I had, the only time I ever had heat stroke in my life and I passed out and I woke up on someone's couch. And um, so what I did was I put the entirety of the book in that fever dream of that, that um, when I like had heat stroke and then uh, when I woke up. So I'll read epilogue and pro prologue and epilogue right next to each other. The Arizona sun in her well-meaning but misguided arms holds me too tightly. I am not dressed for her embrace. Nobody told me that she'd suck the moisture from my skin like a parasite and leave me drained and dizzy. In my delirium, I hear her cry, asking God, why does everything I love go limp in my arms? I am struck stupid, sunsick and useless, babbling like a brook back home. The sun, as a form of, as a form of apology, offers to read me and bridges a deck of playing cards. Where'd you get those from? I don't have the answers, Jack, just your story if you decide, if you desire to hear it. I do. She lays the cards in front of me in the shape of a cross on the ground between us. All right, let's begin. And there are little bits um, that I haven't been reading that are basically her flipping over the cards in the shape of a, of a Celtic cross uh, um, reading style. I, I built it like, like that. <laughs> oh, so that's the uh, uh, prologue and I'll read the epilogue. Um, I awaken on a stranger's couch with a damp rag resting on my head. Oh, you're up, says a woman from a nearby room. You shouldn't have been out in that heat. You're lucky I found you when I did. She sits beside me. I see her face and my heart skips a beat. For a moment, this faint feeling uh, like a fuzzy whisper from a distant dream tries to fight back the butterflies in my stomach. Referencing back to that uh, one poem about like, this is not the girl. Because <laughs> I, uh, I was a little like prone to crushes and stuff as an as a 11 year old, I think. <laughs> so yeah, she defines my fortune through playing cards. It's a, one of those free books that Ryan's always plugging when he's on here. So this is a thing we make and we do uh, Beautiful Blasphemy. We uh, create these little chat books for people. All you got to do is send Ryan your uh, information and he will make one for you. And we print them and we give them away for free. Just a quick plug for that. Um, 
and um, I'm pretty sure when this goes up on YouTube, Brian will have the uh, the stuff in the comment section or whatever the little doobly doo. All righty, um, Doc, got anything? Did he fall asleep? <laughs> we bored him to tears. Wake up, no. Doc. Do you have anything you want to I, read for us? Oh yeah, I've got things. I've got things. I'm so, I'm sorry. I'm I was concentrating on something and zoned out. Hmm. I hear you. Voices of stones from cracks between secret and seen flow ancient melodies in voices of stones, intoning rainbows and arpeggios of song, echoing music of grass and wind, so quiet, mountains whisper anamnesis, embracing silent sunrise kiss and syzygy of forever. And this is everything in that moment. From myriad starred jeweled cavern of forever echoes eldritch wisdom of time, reflecting in dewy gems on grass of a soft misty morning meadow, capturing the light of tomorrow without measure or direction in a dense ocean of silence between beats of my heart where everything in that moment has a name, love. <sighs> nice. So I have one about, it's my uh, Rage Against the Machine type poem. That gives you an idea. But, um, but there's no machine exactly. I use different, different wording. But I've never shared it. So this is the first time. It's New shit. Read, and it, it is from last April, April 10th. I never read it. But it could have been written yesterday. Okay, yeah, can I read it for you guys? Like everything else you read it's tonight. Still, yeah. still freaking relevant. I hate how evergreen this kind of shit is. Like, uh. I know, but it was before people started taking to the streets and everything. I mean, this is from February. This is a year ago. Wow. So, right? Yeah. But anyway, it's this is evergreen. Yes. Okay. It's called the fly at the top of the pile. You are the fly rubbing its hands in the poop greedy for more. You are also the poop smelling up the room, sticking to shoes smeared all over the floors. To remove you, we may open up the doors which will only whitewash your stench and set free too few of your offspring. To remove you, we may stream fly traps across doorways and near ceiling lights which will only trap the smallest and the weakest of your influence. To remove you, we may collide with each other to do our part. We need to clean up our shoes daily. We need to wear bug spray. We need to carry a fly swatter on our gear. We need you to be a little less like fruit to stop attracting the flies. Meanwhile, your hands are dirty and greedy, squatting in the shit smeared all over our house, and no one remembers how you got here, but we never think to blame you too busy blaming each other, too for smelling too good, for enjoying fresh breezes and produce, while you produce more shit right under our noses. Hmm. And I don't know if you saw, like, because you're not in Erie at the moment, but we had this big blowout this week. <laughs> and the UK, it went all the way to the UK, you guys. Yuri embarrassed us. We embarrassed our, ourselves in front of the entire world. I mean, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, 
What? If the British news is reporting what's going on in Erie, that's... Yeah, what happened? I've totally missed it. That's so embarrassing. So the the chief... Of, okay, so flashback. Blah, 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 blah. So after Mr. George Floyd died, a couple of days later, we had a big protest. And it was a, a peaceful protest for the first three hours plus mm-hmm. until someone decided to pull out some spray paint but it went three hours like Mm -hmm. it was not intended to be to go south and it went south and then among that going south um the the first okay so someone had spray paint and then someone threw broke windows and apparently it was the same person Mm -hmm. i i had left before before it went down so um i left at 9 15 so i can swear up until 9 15 it was peaceful Mm -hmm. and i think it shortly Things shortly got out of hand after that. So the first thing that happened after that, that someone pulled out some spray paint and then someone broke a window and it might have been the same person. And then more multiple windows broke on the other side. And I don't know if that was the same person or if more people were like, oh, cool, we're doing this now. Um, and then the first thing that happened was that we had the SWAT team come out or police in like full riot gear on top of the building. It said disperse, and then immediately threw tear canisters, tear, tear gas. So how is that bringing down the level? How is that no, de-escalating anything? Holy moly. So aren't they supposed to de-escalate? Why, why is tear gas the very first thing they do for peaceful protesters? These are people that have been peacefully protesting for three plus hours. Mm-hmm. And the first thing they do it, in response to broken windows, no one had even gotten hurt. And the first thing they do is tear gas. So, and then, so it moved the crowd. The crowd had been gathered in the police parking lot, moved the crowd out into, now they're between um, businesses. They're on a, a, a main street, but it had been blocked up. The police cars have blocked up traffic. So it's just pedestrian mm-hmm. protesters. And, and then things escalated from there. So in the middle of the chaos, um, after she had been tear gassed more than once, um, this young lady, she's like 21. Her name is Hannah something, Hannah S something. Um, she was sitting in the middle of the street, hadn't thrown anything. She was there to peacefully protest and she was just sitting. And the uh, police officer uh, tells her to move and she physically like can't really see where she's going. She's already been tear gassed. She was tear gassed next to the police station. Mm-hmm. And then they tear they tear gas again when they were down there, and then this uh, police officer who ha- whose name has not been released, mm-hmm. uh, like uh, used his foot to push her over. You, you there's video of her pushed over more than one video, and um, I asked her what it felt like because I saw her later at a different protest, and she said peaceful protest, nothing happened at all that day. Um, And she said it felt like uh, someone had pushed her. And in fact, the first time she had said anything, that's how she phrased it, was that someone pushed me because she couldn't see what was going on. She had been tear gassed. But Mm. that's how it felt to her. So it's good to know it didn't feel like a kick, but it was still with a foot. Like, that's not the way you're supposed to handle people sitting in the street. You're supposed to pick them up, arrest them. Like, Mm -hmm. anyway, so in response to all this, um, that guy got three days suspension and then now he's back on the force. He was on the force that whole weekend. In fact, he didn't have desk duty until like the following Monday because they needed him or whatever. Meanwhile, the, the police, um, had with them that weekend, um, several police officers that had been in quarantine that had been exposed to COVID and they were out there, which was like some below the belts. It. so that was just crazy to me so forgive us for still protesting and saying hey our police are crooked like fix it mm-hmm. um so i'm turning on a light real quick hold on guys. Mm-hmm. wow Whew. interesting so so anyway w- this week uh, apparently, it was on Monday. We had um, our was it, what was his title? Chief of Police? It wasn't Chief of Police. Chief something something Police. So, but there's a I forget his exact title, but he was a chief, mm-hmm. and he had written a letter to the mayor and 
somehow this letter got out and it was full of racist stuff. You know, black people need to take care of their own. And wow. uh, Black Lives Matter movement has been connected with Antifa or Antifa, or however you say it. And Hillary Clinton and and uh, George Soros are all teamed up with Black Lives Matter movement and all this crazy bullshit. And um, and it's and and then so and then we showed our asses even more when you have the people like, oh yeah, what did he say that was wrong? I totally agree with him. And you're like, get rid of all these people, man. Anybody who has a position that's saying this stuff, get them out. Wow. And they're like, what's wrong with? It? No, he just shouldn't have said anything. Is what someone said, and I'm like, no, let him say something. We don't want that yeah. someone who has these views yeah. with That's this exactly position. The like, problem is people that have those views in those positions. Like, you're these are people you're supposed to be protecting because these are citizens in your community, regardless of their color, yeah, regardless, regardless of their race, economic race, status. Whatever. Whatever. Like, you can diametrically, you can have views that are diametrically opposed to that person. You're supposed to still protect them. You're not supposed to be like, oh, yeah, they got to police their own. And blah, blah, blah. Like, no, no, that's some white supremacy bullshit. For sure. And then now, oh. like, if someone has a Black Lives Matter um, sign up and they're a business, the police are like, oh, well, what happens if someone calls the fire department? You know, maybe, I mean, what if, what if you get robbed? Oh, wouldn't it be a shame if no one came out? Like, excuse me? It's right. awful. Right. That's, that's what it's like in Erie right um, now. Bitch, you have I a Black Lives Matter sign, and the police are like, "We're not going to help you if something job. goes down." Holy balls! So well, at, we, at these, that, we, as Erie people, knew these people were there. We knew that it was bad, and now we're just seeing how bad. You know, it's like knowing you have to knowing you have to vacuum. You can see the carpet dirty, and then you see all the dirt in the vacuum after you have done, and you're like. Oh, look at all the junk that I put. Holy crap, I haven't vacuumed in a minute. Like, that's what it's like right now. And Dude, so that Ohio's, guy, I think Ohio's he got fired, crazy, but man. he didn't get fired because he wrote it. He got fired because it was leaked. Yep. Because a whole week, or just about a week later, like, the, he wrote the thing on Monday, got fired today, on Friday. Wow. Dang. Mm. Wow. Uh, Unfortunately, happened. if you call in uh, the state highway patrol uh from pa from ohio from just about any state you're going to get the same sort of garbage from them mm -hmm. yeah it's bad it's it's just bad so yeah you know you, even black lives even matter our needs military to has the refrain of so drain the swamp you know i think black lives matter should take up take up the chant mm -hmm. drain the swamp get them all out of there Right. Oh fuck. Only the you start draining the swamp, you find out how many alligators there are. Yeah, and they're multiplying. That's what my whole poem was about. Like, mm. even if you get a couple of them gone, there's more. There's more. There's more. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. It's awful. Part of part of the problem is uh, that. When children are born, they're born completely without hatred. And then they're taught to hate by parents mm -hmm. and by so-called religious leaders. Well, and, it, and also it, just society. I was, I well, was going to Society to an yeah. extent, but society is, in their case, is primarily their, their parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my book, Anyone who teaches or preaches hatred in whatever form is guilty of child abuse. For sure. Mm -hmm. But the other problem, though, is that you, you grow up into a, a system that is designed to, have, to be like a caste system. And if you're designed to, if you look like a white person, then you benefit from it. If you don't look like a white person, you don't. And so a lot of times... You know, I, I don't even think sometimes people even see it, that they're benefiting from the system because they don't recognize mm -hmm. different realities, that not everyone is experiencing the same country you are, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, not everyone's experiencing the same eerie I am, you know? Yeah. Like, and that's one thing that's beautiful about, like, the poetry community is that there's a lot of different people represented where you mm -hmm. can hear all sorts of different stories 
and to recognize that your story isn't the only story. Yeah. And, and your the way you experience your city isn't the way other people experience it. Exactly. So that's really powerful recognition of like, you know, what it's like for me growing up and what it was like for me in this city and what it's like for me when someone pulls me over and gives me a speeding ticket is completely yeah. different yeah. than someone else. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't just tell someone it's all in their head, you know, stop talking about it. Like, you know, like, like no, start talking about it. Mm -hmm. Talk about it more. Like, and the, but the thing is though, the people they're like, we have been, did you check the books by T Toni Morrison? And you mm -hmm. know, like, yeah. they're like, do your own homework, man. Why do I have to tell you all my stuff? Like, speaking of which cat, um, did you see, I started a book club? Yes. Yes. All right, we're uh, currently reading White Fragility. Um, okay. So if you wanted to get in on that, let me know. Let's see. I'll see. I got other stuff I'm doing, but but and I know it's good stuff. I've heard good things. Yeah, it's um, it's an interesting read. For sure. Yeah. I have fr friends of mine are like tired of book clubs. They're like, no, you need to do stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, talk I about like, it. But I do. People, different people are at different yeah. stages of well, becoming that's aware of what's going too. on. And it, yeah. just because you're reading a book doesn't mean that's all you're doing. Exactly. So, well, also, I, mean, I would say to keep that in mind. Like, don't let with, that be all you're doing. Yeah. With the, with the line of work I'm in, like organizing this kind of thing like a book club and things like that. Mm -hmm. Not saying I'm working, but if it is going online, so I can't say, yeah, like I'm not actually doing this in the capacity of a librarian, but. No, but it's like. That's the kind of work I do is organizing this stuff so that, that the information gets out and that people can, you know, get access to it. So it's like, mm -hmm. in a way, what I'm doing is a form of activism. What I'm doing is a form of, of getting people like yeah i'm not just like hey lay like, let's let's you know read this stuff and that's all we're gonna do like but i'm getting people right. to that stage you know to write everybody write your senators write your congressman yeah. write your mayor write the chief of police mm -hmm. but it's like when you're look when you are in erie just yeah. speaking of my for my own town you recognize that it's an uphill battle when these mm -hmm. people have different ideologies from you and different realities from you yeah. and they see you as other and they see you as Antifa or Antifa or however you. It's not even a thing. And it's like, that isn't even an organization. I say that every time. Like, I, I let I let a lot of stuff slide from my my racist friends, which is on me. Because I'm like, I don't know what to tell them. You know, it's an 80 year old white lady of course she is mm. right of course she's saying racist bullshit so yeah like what what else would i expect from an eight-year-old white lady on my feet but it's like when they say that that one of them uh, shared a picture of a supposed leader of antifa and i was like it's not an organization it's not <laughs> there's no that's leader not this work. that's not just share that <laughs> don't, with them. like don't that's not how this guy's this works. house and like shoot him because he even if he has an anti-fascist ideology, he's not a leader of anything. Like, mm -hmm. leave him alone. <laughs> just, God damn. And that's oh, the yeah. thing is too, that's where we are in that's America. That's the thing that can get someone killed. So I was like, uh, actually. <laughs> like saying you're against killed. fascism is considered being against the government. <laughs> well, it is. And that's where we are right now. There's oh, a bunch of people that don't see it. Yeah. This is exactly how I pictured the Antichrist would be, just for the record. 12-year-old me, you were exactly right. <laughs> it is exactly, exactly the way oh, it was written God. in Revelation, 12-year-old me. One, one of the problems <laughs> is that uh, number 45 is the direct reincarnation of Adolf Hitler. That's an interesting idea. That's a very interesting idea. Oh yeah, I believe uh, I I believe it strongly. And uh, what horrified me most was the on the election date. Uh, actually, the the morning that it was announced that he had won was the anniversary 
of Kristallnacht in Germany. Hmm. And uh, it was not a good thing. Devil's Advocate, wouldn't every morning that a president is announced land on that day and therefore be the anniversary? No, because, because the uh, election day shifts around according to the calendar. Oh, you're right, you're right. Okay, cool, cool. Your point. <laughs> Good point. And uh, I knew of Trump's, excuse me for mentioning his name, uh, tendencies but, long before that. he was elected. And oh, yeah. It, it, yeah, I know. And, and then it came to me who he was. Yeah. Uh, and and the, the thing is, everything he's done is according to Hitler's handbook. Yeah. It's almost play by play by play. Yeah, well, it, it didn't start with Hitler, unfortunately. I, I, uh, tell me you about it. You know what it. I mean? It's a pattern, and it's just a humanity pattern. Yeah. After he got elected, I, I started getting interested in patterns in history, and I tried to dig into some of that. Uh, what I found was not quite what I was looking for, but it was about how we're trying to emulate like emulate a pattern like we're trying to emulate a pattern uh, yeah yeah but that was more yeah. about like trying to get back to like however we imagined the, the gods were like um you know like this god rolled a rock up the hill for eternity so that's what we're gonna do you know this mm -hmm. kind of thing where we're like trying to emulate our mythologies and our gods and stuff so huh. it wasn't yeah. quite the same thing as like our histories that that seem to repeat mm -hmm. yeah but it's like ultimate power leads to what's it yeah whatever <laughs> yeah corruption ultimate corruption yeah so so here's here's one that kind of goes with that um like what i was talking about like who do you write for you know like is your perspective mm -hmm. worthwhile right like who who are you trying to Mm -hmm. trying to reach out to to tell your side of things from your point of view right yeah so that's what this is and this was written 410 last year it's called the edge and this was written from a very existentialist uh moment where i was like you know what's this all about anyway kind of thing so this is the edge who is there to write for when the era fades into yesterday New dark ages fit for deep sea fish reemerge from their depths. We cannot write for descendants when future generations are running out of time. So we must write for each other as we hold each other close at the edge of the cliffs of the present. We are journalists without a posterity, just the present. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it, it, you're primarily though. I think we are writing for ourselves, and if someone else uh, actually feels what we are writing, what we're saying, it is it's it's serendipity. Mm -hmm. That we happen to pluck the right cord within them. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's a rough world out there. Yeah. Uh, what, I, what I would like to see happen mm -hmm. uh, in essence is a I don't know if any, if either of you reads any science fiction. Oh, all the time. Arthur, yeah. Arthur C. Clarke's Childhood's End. Oh, I haven't read I that. I haven't read that particular one, but I, I have read Arthur C. Clarke. Yeah. Yeah, but I'd like to see the Childhood's End scenario, I, other than the final scenes. I'll have to look that up. 
Oh. It's where an alien species intervenes and brings complete peace. <laughs> okay. I thought yeah. about that actually. Like, mm. um, if you remember, like, God, a year ago, geez, time is so weird. Maybe not even, it, maybe it just feels like a year ago. <laughs> yeah. But, but um, when we had, um, like, some footage that was taken about, like, um, it was focused on the moon and then you could see like something that people were saying was maybe UFOs like flying around between mm -hmm. the telescope and the moon and it looked like maybe even closer to the moon than to us like they were really small or whatever so right around in there I was thinking about like you know what if what if there we had like you know aliens come to earth and and the beams you know, the, with the aliens coming down and the beams would be like, would be kind of like the rapture in Revelation. And what if Jesus was a great alien? And like, wouldn't that be crazy if, there, if it really happened kind of similar to the way it happens in the book of Revelation and then yeah. Jesus turns out to be a great alien and the rapture is everyone getting beamed up into spaceships. And wouldn't that be a crazy science fiction story? And this yeah. would happen. That'd be interesting. <laughs> like, That'd be an interesting sci-fi story. Wouldn't that be crazy? And it's like very similar to Revelations, like yeah, the the seals and the trumpets and all this stuff. But it's like it's with great aliens. Well, in in uh, childhood's end, what happens is uh, humanity evolves and uh, becomes energy, and then the Earth itself. The whole thing. <laughs> then the Earth itself. Uh, just explodes. Hmm. Wow. But, There's a lot uh, of ways this thing could go down, right? But you're like, I, what? What uh, surprise surprises are in store? We've had a lot of surprises this year. We're just like, and eh, next would be aliens. All right, I'll bring it on. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've, uh, I've, I've, been, I've peered into the future and. Uh, in oh about a quarter of a millennium from now the earth is going to die the 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 weapons have been created already which will trigger a chain reaction in the crust of the earth and the earth will die in flame so how long have we got is it a fourth of quarter, a millennium a quarter so of a millennium about 250 years. 250? Okay, so my, my original guess is about 100 years. So that's that's a, not too much different from my guess. I guess we'd have a, humans for another 100 years. And I have a bunch of, bunch of existential crises poems about that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I have one like, you know, if you knew that the end was right around the corner, would you floss? Would you bother? Would you even try to make things better in the short time you have, you know? And in that poem, my guess was like, what, like, I think I said like three years or five years, it was way shorter. But the idea is like, you know, if you feel like the end is nigh, what do you, what do you do with that? You know, do you try to make well, anything better? Do you bother? Wow. There are some people who who will, and then there are those who will just, um, shall we say, go go a little berserk, and right. do everything and anything they have ever wanted to do, but repress the urge. Right, do. like let the id go free. You know, just have fun, yeah. do whatever. Yeah. Let, let the id go free. Let the id go free. Of, of the old sci-fi movie uh, Forbidden Planet. <laughs> I'm familiar with that one. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So I have a tendency to, uh, when I do books, do like a prologue, epilogue kind of situation that kind of introduces you and exits you. Um, and I figure I kind of, some of these themes kind of like uh, especially near the end we were talking about that kind of um cosmic kind of stuff 
Um, I'm going to read before and after from Everything Defenestrated. In the beginning, there was nothing. Not even nothing. No thing for longer than we can fathom. A nothing that lasted forever. Forever times forever. And then suddenly, one day, and for no apparent reason, boom, everything. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, gases, solids, planets, earth, microbes, microbiomes, fish, raptors, chickens, dolphins, platypi, australopithecus, mankind, and all of our cousins that we screwed and slaughtered, agriculture, nation states, ownership, slavery, freedom, written language, industrialization, the printing, printing press, chapbooks, and the internet. And somewhere in the midst of all of that, you and I were set on a collision course to this moment. That's how I opened that piece. And then uh, that leads into this poem, actually, so I might as well just follow it in. You and I, we stumbled into being like a, by accident. But once we got our footing, we started running, sprinting, biking, driving, flying, teleporting, grunting, speaking, shouting, screaming, telephoning, carving, painting, scribing, typing, televisioning, hoping, praying, preaching, leeching, televangeling, hunting, fighting, shooting, nuking, telewarring, no warning. We took without asking what was rightfully ours because we said so, because we were the first who could. We claimed and named and maimed this world because we thought we should, because no one else would. And we did all of this, we called it good. We willed it to be so it was so, we killed so it would be so, and those of us who might object would have their necks snapped in the next lynching. We made mad mobs and gave them fire. We raised our children with it, burning inside and out. We passed legacy, a legacy of scorch, earth, and piracy. We did all of this and called it God. You and I, we stumbled into being by accident, but we felt it must be designed, for surely we thought no chance happening could make something so perfectly bu uh, brutal, righteous, and, br and beautiful. We thought we must be handcrafted by divinity. And then after, in the end, there will be nothing, not even nothing, no thing for longer than we can fathom, a nothing that will last forever, forever times forever, which means everything you do is all for naught in the grand scheme of things, but also the same goes for the grand scheme of things compared to the incomprehensible nothing of which we speak. Yesterday is meaningless. Today is not even a blip on the cosmic radar. Beyond tomorrow is unknowable. This book is a dead tree I had vandalized for my pride. In a million years, language will have changed so much that even, a cop even if a copy of it survived, the scribbles would be meaningless to eyes, human or otherwise. All of that is to simply say this. We are priceless and leashless. We are bound by no destiny and chained to no past. You and I, we are free. Nice. Yeah. Well, oh. you, in a way, you were you were talking of, of uh, entropy's end. Mm -hmm. The ult the ultimate in steady state mechanics. Yeah. That's kind of like the, the whole, that's the beginning of the end of the book, Everything Defenestrated. Not to be plugging my own stuff, but I'm plugging my own stuff. You can buy it on Amazon. Uh. <laughs> um, this is a poem I wrote several years ago. Um, I've never felt in any way that I've had a home. Mm. Uh, it's a part of my being and it perhaps may be a result of karma or it may be due to the abuse I suffered when I was an infant and a, and a toddler. So mm. this is your right which is a Welsh noun, meaning a homesickness for a home to which you cannot return or which never was. Mm. And in a very real sense, uh, that, may, that is true because uh, 
my soul, psyche, whatever name you wish to give it, is 10 billion years old. I'm an exile from another planet for what I did there. I know I had at one time a gentle heart for home, but after I had left her side, I found I was alone. So all alone I wander on the streets of everywhere. Alone I walk and wonder if ever I'll be there. But where is there, I ponder, have I been there air before, or have memories come to founder on some distant, silent shore? So all alone I wander on the streets of everywhere. Alone I walk and wonder if ever I'll be there. Why is it that I maunder and I travel all alone? My life was torn asunder and ever I have roamed. So all alone I wander on the streets of everywhere. Alone I walk and wonder if ever I'll be there. The houses, they surround me as I wander all alone. They call out, come to see me, but there's none to call my home. So all alone I wander on the streets of everywhere. Alone I walk and wonder if ever I'll be there. Now I'm always on the outside, no matter where I roam, always wanting inside, but never finding home. So all alone I wander on the streets of everywhere. Alone I walk and wonder if ever I'll be there. My shadow with me wanders on these empty streets of stone. Alone I walk and wonder if ever I'll be home. So all alone I wander on the streets of everywhere. Alone I walk and wonder if ever I'll be there. My life is all asunder and pain does rend my soul. So alone I, so alone I walk and wonder if ever I'll be home. And now I near my end of days and want no more to roam. So now I search for any way, a road to take me home. So all alone I wander on the streets of everywhere. Alone I walk and wonder if ever I'll be there. If ever I'll be there. Very nice. Was that and a villanelle? Um, I don't know what form it is, but that's what came out. Uh, and you can't return to a home you destroyed. The the form sounded familiar. Mm -hmm. I like uh, that. I like the repeating lines like that. It, this was written to be a song. Mm -hmm. Okay. I liked the I guess chorus or um, basically repeating like refrain. That was uh, mm -hmm. that was nice. Yeah. Yeah, it sounded like a villanelle kind of, but maybe you didn't intend it to be. Uh, well, you accidentally wrote a villanelle. It could be. It could be. Are weird, man. You ever hear um, They Might Be Giants' uh, Don't Hate the Villain, Hate the Villanelle? <laughs> yes, I love that. <laughs> the yeah. whole, the whole song that. And it is, is a villanelle. villanelle. Yes, it's beautiful. I've written a couple of villanelles, but theirs was, theirs was great. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, someday, who knows? I may present. I may uh, get together with somebody who does uh, country western music and see if they might put it to to some music. Oh. Maybe. See where it goes. All righty. Well, Someone I was think... trying to call me, so I was like, "No, can't mm -hmm. call me now." It's a number I don't even know, so. <laughs> um does uh cat do you have anything you want to um finish us off with yes this is called build it was written march 21st 2019 oh, over a year ago build still true today whatever my purpose is i am failing at it punching a clock kissing my daughter embracing my spouse folding my socks 
I am floundering for the Eureka, how to read this compass. How can I help humanity save itself from itself, or at least slow down the ending? How many generations do we have left to figure out how to reverse the industrial era before it reverses us? This is my time, my era, my productive years, where I can help create the now and the next. What will my hands build? Hmm. That does yeah. sound like the perfect uh, thought to end the night with and to meditate on. So I think that's uh, where I want to leave that's it tonight. We're, start, we're, starting, we're stopping a little early, but there was only three of us, so... I'm surprised we, we made it through. <laughs> we filled it up with mostly poetry. And it's nice to have conversation in between yeah. because it's like, oh, that reminds me of this piece I have. Let me read that for you. Well, and, like, yeah. and there are parts where it broke down to almost a therapy session. So, <laughs> Right. Which, well, that's kind of what it turns into, honestly, especially yeah. if you have people kind of on a similar wavelength. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm dealing with this thing and it's heavy and Mm -hmm. I don't yep. know how to deal, but this is what I'm doing so far. Yeah. <laughs> and that can be really helpful to recognize you aren't alone, right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Alrighty, guys. Uh, it's been fun. Um, see you in two up. weeks. What's up? Yeah, see you in two weeks. As long as you yeah. behave yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> we will but, try. But I'm not going to tell you how to. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so two weeks from now, we are looking at the 9th of August, right? No, August. Actually, the 2nd of August, uh, the 2nd of July, sorry, 2nd of July. <laughs> like, wow, we're going to skip forward all the way to August. No, <laughs> 2nd of July, I'm sorry, I got my month, I'm excited about it. August if you mm -hmm. want, Josh, I'm game, let's do this. No, <laughs> 2nd of July. <laughs> I don't think time okay. works that way, though. <laughs> We're going to say in two weeks, it'll be the 9th of August, right? <laughs> that would be awesome just to skip ahead. <laughs> um, no, 2nd of July. This all uh, out. And um, that, should be, that should be fun. We'll, uh, I'll try to do a bigger push. Um, but even if, I, even if it just turns out to be three of us, that's fine, too. That's fine. All right. Yeah. I'll bring a different notebook, so I'll have new stuff, new to you stuff. New to me stuff. I will try to write something new, but I honestly haven't written yeah, anything too. new since we started this whole thing. So, yeah, me too. I I have stuff brewing. It's just about getting yeah, it out. It's just the gestation I, period. I miss I have a lot of times. Thousand poems to draw from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All righty. Well, I'll catch you guys later. This was fun. See you in two Good weeks. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>